Oh, what the? F oh man. No. Hello everybody, how are you all doing? Hope you're having a great day today. Today we'll be taking another look at the Technician and updating our build for the Pathogen DLC. Before we begin, I'll be honest, nothing has really changed from my previous video about the Technician. This build still is, in my opinion, the strongest build for any situation. Except maybe against the Synths. If you've seen my previous Technician build, see this as a refresher course video. If you haven't seen my previous Technician build, well, then you're in for a treat. Let's start with the abilities. The first ability is the turret, and we'll be taking the incinerator turret replacer for it. Reason being is that the incinerator turret is still the highest damage dealing turret in the game. Sure, a lot of people like the new particle turret, however, in the grand scheme of things, it's actually not that great of an option. The damage it deals is pretty neglectable, even when pumping it full of force multiplier perks, the damage just isn't there. And I'm already hearing people saying, but the particle turret can pierce enemies. Well, yeah, but so can your fire turret, and it deals a lot more damage. Plus, the utility you gain through particle turret, it's slow, is overshadowed by the utility you gain from your second ability. Speaking of which, the second ability is Charged Coils. Charged Coils lets you toss a device that lodges itself to any surface, even a Xeno, and unleashes an electrical shock in an area around it. This damages and slows targets unfortunate enough to walk into its area of effect. And last one is Cross-Platform Synergy. Cross-Platform Synergy allows your allies to take 10% less damage when standing near your turret and allows you to regenerate the health of your turret when standing near it. It's also a good conversational piece when talking about my you play as an android conspiracy theory. The HP regen for your turret isn't that great though, it's actually better to just pick up your turret and set it back down. It's a lot faster and regains all of its health. Before we head into the perk grid, only a small number of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. You might be watching right now without even realizing you're not subbed. So please, if you like this video and you want to get notified when another video gets released, hit that sub button. But really help out a small YouTuber like myself. Thanks. In the perk grid, you will see the incinerator turret replacer perk for our turret. And the first thing we'll do is add dynamic delivery systems to it. It increases the rate of fire for our turret by 10% and allows it to deal 25% more damage to armored targets as long as they have armor. This is a great help when stripping off the armor of the big red elites. Believe me, on insane difficulty, every little bit helps. That's also why we're taking parasocial relationship with us. Parasocial relationship helps you deal 20% more damage to enemies recently damaged by your turret, and that's a big boost in weapon damage. Especially when we're taking a hard-hitting weapon like the Pump Shoddy. Because we're getting 20% more damage from our turret, it's only fair that our turret also gets some damage as well. That's why we're taking Force Multiplier 1 and 2 with us. This increases our turret's damage by 20% as well. And for those wondering, yes, adding fire rate and damage does help your incinerator turret. The fire rate increases the frequency of the dot damage, and the damage, well, increases the damage per frequency. Those perks allow our turret to more reliably kill runners, which is needed for our next two perks, Scalable Machine Learning and Modular Integration. Scalable Machine Learning gives us 10% more reload speed and stability, while Modular Integration gives us 5% more accuracy and fire rate. This stacks up to 5 times, but you only gain those stacks through your turret. That's why we need to increase our turret's potency. The more reliably it can kill, the more reliably we can gain our stacks. And these stacks are very powerful. Reload speed and fire rate contribute massively to your DPS, as does accuracy when you're using a shotgun. The more pellets that hit your target, the more damage. But all that damage is worthless if we don't have a way of keeping the horde at bay. And that's where the charged coils come in. Throwing these out will slow down the horde considerably. So having one in hand at all times is practically a must. That's why we're taking 33% recharge speed on these things. That'll lower the cooldown to 15 seconds, which is just on par with the duration of the charged coils. This means that you'll always have a charged coil handy when the last one expires. To make sure that the Xenos don't make it through these coils, we're also taking Creative Pain Point Solutions and Compatibility Matrix with us. Creative Pain Point Solutions increases not only our damage, but also our turret's damage by another 15%. And Compatibility Matrix buffs our damage by 10% for each coil on the field. Now, I know, it's tempting to constantly throw all three coils out to get that juicy 30% extra damage, but I would only use that strategy when a big red elite comes in. 
But to put it into perspective, you'll already be doing 25% increased damage to anything entering one charged coil. The last perk we'll be giving our charged coils is Maximize Retention. This perk adds a 33% chance to stun targets that walk into your coil's area of effect. However, this still isn't fixed from my previous Technician video. The stun still happens 100% of the time, which is great when you want to save an ally from a Prowler attack. Because we now have a reliable way of stunning the opponent, we'll also be taking Down and Out with us. We deal 20% more damage to enemies that are stunned or knocked down. If we tally everything up when everything procs, we'll get 25% more accuracy, 25% more fire rate, 50% more stability, 50% more reload speed, and a whopping 85% additional weapon damage. But that's not all. Our turret gets 10% more fire rate and 35% more damage, with an additional 25% more damage if the target is armored. And we're not done yet because we help our team by providing them with an AoE stun and an AoE slow effect, allowing us and our team enough time to kill the advancing horde. Of course, with abilities alone, we won't do much to stop the horde, so we need weapons. For our CQW, we have plenty of options. For shotguns, you can go with the Medved, the Heirloom, the Pump Shoddy, or, currently my favorite, the Breaching Scattergun. You can also take an SMG with you instead and take the Japer, the PPZ, or the Barrage Flechette. Just know that if you're taking an SMG, you might run into some ammo issues throughout the mission. Or, if you're really adventurous, you can go double flamethrower and take the incinerator with you. But I do recommend one of the shotguns instead. For the pump shot, you can go with the assault break for more fire rate, accuracy, and stability, field reserves for more reload speed and max ammo, and a hybrid sight for more accuracy and weak point damage. For the Breaching Scattergun, go with the Compensator for more fire rate, Compound Magazines for more reload speed, magazine capacity, and fire rate on hit, and a Hybrid Sight. For the Medved, go with the Assault Break for more fire rate, Rapid Dispersal Unit for more reload speed, and a Hybrid Sight. And for the Heirloom, go with the Assault Break, Rapid Dispersal Unit, and a Polygonal Rifling for more fire rate and a 50% chance to have the enemy take 10% additional damage. This additional damage benefits the entire team. If you're taking one of the SMGs with you, take the Compensator, Compound Magazines, and Hybrid Sight for the Japer, a Compensator, Tactical Mag, and a Hybrid Sight for the PPZ, and a Compensator, Drap Magazine, and Hybrid Sight for the Barrage Flechette. And if you're going Double Flamethrower, take Flared Breach, Micro Dot Sight, and Polygonal Rifling for the Type 99 Incinerator. Since most CQWs don't have good range, I recommend going with a pistol that has good range. Something like the Type 95 Combat Pistol or the Frontier Revolver. For the Type 95, go with the Compensator for more fire rate, drop magazines for more reload speed and magazine capacity, and a hybrid sight. And for the Frontier Revolver, take the Compensator, Rapid Dispersal Unit, and a hybrid sight. And for consumables, always go with the Cryo Grids for more CC and a Vulnerability Assessment Drone for more teamwide DPS. If someone else has taken drones, go with the Hardened Electroshock Turrets instead. And this is the new, well actually old, Technician build that is still viable for the Pathogen DLC. And going with the new naming system I'm using for my builds, this build has been named The Arsenal. Unequaled in terms of deployable tech, the Arsenal is the answer to any tech's wish to emphasize on being a defensive specialist. To aid in its efforts, the Arsenal is stocked with several deployable electronics which can protect allies and even turn the tide of a battle. But don't take my word for it. Try this build out yourself and see how powerful it truly is. And if you want to see more Aliens Fire Team Elite, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you never miss another upload. And I'll see you when I see you. Take care, physical. Nice work, Esther. Esther, steal the door behind them. Catch your breath, Fire Team. Rodriguez is just.